Hi guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm currently working on a large canvas of world champion boxer Derry Matthews, local Merseyside boxer, absolute legend. And I have been fortunate to do a wee bit of training in his gym uh, previously. So in this video, my new studio lighting has arrived. So I really hope this will improve the video content. A lot of work has gone into this canvas as there's so many tones I have to incorporate but it's really starting to take shape and hopefully by the end of the video, I'll have the whole finished finish canvas. Also, what I'm gonna try and do might be a complete disaster, but I'm gonna try and incorporate a wee bit of uh, audio over as well, just explaining some of the processes and how I put these large canvases together. But yeah, if you're new to the channel, uh, my name's Dave and I'm still very much in the learning process of video editing, so just bear with me. But yeah, I'm going to shut up now and uh, start playing out the video and yeah, I hope you enjoy. Rock and roll. human beings. As promised, I will be doing a little bit of a voiceover. This might be a complete disaster, but we'll see how it goes. As you probably noticed in the drone, I've already blacked out the background and I have started the left arm. Uh, the reason for this is I thought I was recording when I was initially doing it and it turned out it wasn't recording at all. So if you would like to see the process on how I go about kind of blacking out the background, just go back and watch some of the previous videos. One of the reasons uh, I do black out the background, which I don't recommend doing this uh, as it can be quite messy and it does take a little bit of skill to, to walk around the background. However, I use the background as a palette. So by having the background already blacked out, it allows me to uh, drag in the black tones onto the actual body that I'm, or the area that I'm working on. And I'll tend to, once I drag it in, I focus on the darker kind of area. And then by just working and working and working the tones, uh, I'll eventually get a, a very soft tone of the makeup brush. Just like my life, it's a complete mess and all over the place. You'll notice when I'm doing these canvases, I never uh, stick to one specific area. So one minute I'll be working on the eye, then I'll be working on the arm, the body, etc. And it's just the way I work and it's the it's a process that I really enjoy doing. Eventually everything will come together at, in the end so it's your preference really. But if you're new to this uh, it is recommended that you, if you're right-handed for example you'll start in the top left and work your way across the canvas. Or you can just be a complete disaster like me and just just go for it. So yeah, what I'm doing here is I'm just building up all those basic tones. And what this will allow me to do is once I cover the, the whole canvas with some basic tones, I can then see what I'm working with and just keep refining each detail and each tone. It's kind of funny, but the more you, you the more you charcoal you apply to the canvas, uh, the more tones you, you can see, and then you'll keep noticing extra little tones that you didn't initially see. And uh, this is this is one of the processes I really enjoy. You know? So I'm using the the overhead uh, camera mount at the moment does make Derry's head look absolutely massive, but I can assure you that's just the camera angle. His head isn't actually that big. 
and in person. So I've kind of just sped up the process here a little bit. Um, we just do a little bit of time lapse because this work does take a lot of time. Like I'm estimating I'm spending about maybe four or five hours every evening working on this. So when you have four or five hours of footage per day and you try and refine it all down into a 20 minute video, yeah. It helps to speed it up, otherwise we'd be here all day. So the way I normally kind of work is, I'm not necessarily trying to get that hyper-realism uh, look. I do enjoy hyper-realism, but it takes a lot of work, you know, and there's a lot of people out there doing that. So when I'm doing my canvases, I almost try and create almost like a statue. It almost looks airbrushed, even though it's, it's actually just done with charcoal. But that's the kind of style I'm happy with, and I'm very happy with the results I get. I really hope this audio is coming out okay. Uh, I actually, I haven't invested in a proper microphone setup, but because I am playing around with uh, voiceovers now, I think that will be the, the next investment for the studio, will be a good microphone. And uh, yeah, I'm actually, I'm, I'm enjoying doing this now. Even though it's not scripted, I'm just freestyling this here. So, uh, yeah. When working with a, a large canvas as well, uh, initially what I've done is I, I've marked out the whole entire drawing uh, with some soft pencil lines. Uh, so I do kind of have uh, uh, lines to kind of go with, you know. Uh, it can be a little bit difficult when you're working on large scale, uh, just for the hand-eye coordination, especially when you're uh, using your phone as a preference. But over time, uh, you get used to this, and it'll, it'll come quite easily. It just takes a wee bit of practice, that's all. So what I'm doing here is I'm just using a little bit of tissue paper and what that will do is it'll soften all those tones so well and it'll get rid of maybe some of the brush strokes uh, so it kind of has a little look again once again it has that kind of airbrushed kind of look to it and I will continue this process the whole way throughout uh, this drawing. Charcoal pencils, don't even get me started on charcoal pencils. There's so many pencils out there to choose from, uh, from hard pencils to soft pencils. I think probably one of the most popular choices would be general charcoal pencils. Uh, but then again, if you do get a soft general pencil, you will get a lot of charcoal dust coming off it. So it is quite important to get a nice fine uh, nib on the on the pencil. I think that's what you call it, a nib or a pint. And uh, yeah, spend a wee bit of time just get getting your pencil sorted, you know. Realistically, in an ideal world, what I should have done at the very start is go in with the pencil and just any of the black areas, kind of just mark it out with the pencil first. But I f always find that when you're working with uh, bigger scale canvases, uh, 
you, you don't necessarily have that creative flow from the very start. It normally takes a few hours to get that for that creative flow to kick in. And just try just judging where I am in the drawing. I'm in that process now. I'm, I'm loving every moment of it. I'm just in my own wee world. And when I'm doing these uh, large canvases, uh, I normally listen to just a, a podcast on YouTube. But <laughs> I'm actually listening to the, this whole Johnny Depp and what's her name, Amber, Amber Corkis. So I pretty much uh, listened to the whole entire trial uh, while creating this, this draw. That's kept me entertained, that's for sure. But yeah, it depends. Sometimes I listen to a bit of music. Sometimes I, I listen to a documentary. But I find that I always have to have some something in the background. It just helps me concentrate. Another thing when I'm doing these canvases, I don't actually give myself a, a deadline. And one of the reasons for this is uh, I really try and create, a, have a good balance in my life. So I do a lot of gym work, I swim quite a lot, I go running, do a little bit of charity work. And then obviously I have my main source of income as well. So at the moment, uh, these canvases are fantastic, but I also have uh, my, my work priorities as well, which does involve art. So I'm constantly chopping and changing uh, from what I'm doing throughout the day. But I enjoy this. This works for me. I feel that if you spend too much time on something you love doing, eventually you'll, you'll start to... <laughs> pick up resentments for, for what you love, so it's very important to create a balance. The area I'm working on here, the boxing shorts, uh, this actually took me a few hours because there was a lot of detail put into this. You, can't, you might necessarily pick it up on the camera, but when you inspect the actual canvas in person, uh, that you, you'll notice all the little details and cracks. Well, overall, where we are in the drawing here, it's really coming together now. Uh, everything is kind of covered, which I like. And each time I come back to the drawing, uh, I just kind of keep refining those tones until I'm happy with them. Again, like I said previously, I have a habit of jumping all over the place. So I've currently moved back to where I started from the very beginning. And that's on the, the glove. Is it the left or the right? It's his right, right glove, but left on the... On the Just for these tones I'm working on at the moment here, it's a little trick I use, but because I've put down basic tones on the arm, I actually just run the brush over those tones, which are already uh, very much pressed into the canvas. And the little bit of charcoal that does pick up, I use that then as the softest tone. But if you're kind of new to doing this kind of work, I do recommend just kind of going from your darkest tone to the light and eventually you, you pick up your own flow. Uh, yeah. I've really tried my best in this video to kind of show you the whole process and I hope maybe you can pick up on a few little things that I'm doing because I'd love if maybe somebody was to recreate something similar using my little techniques, that'd be awesome. <laughs> yep, 
yeah, I'm just thinking to myself, uh, a lot of the YouTube videos I watch, people put a lot of effort into to kind of the whole kind of presentation of how to showcase themselves on YouTube. But uh, I just go for that natural look in my own habitat, in my kind of loungewear. Charcoal is very messy, so I do recommend uh, if you're not, the, if you're kind of a messy person when working with paints or charcoals, just put on some old clothes. Who cares what you look like? You're in the comfort of your own home. So this is a very important part of the drawing process here now is putting in the kind of white highlights. And I'll backtrack a little bit here. So what I've done is once I'm happy with all the charcoal tones, I'll then put in a layer of graphite powder and we really get that graphite powder uh, put onto the canvas because it's very easy for erasing. So with the eraser here, I have kind of cut different patterns in it, uh, just using my standing knife. And then I'll go through the whole process of working backwards now where I'm erasing. So once you kind of kind of get the erased the kind of whitest area, then you want to just almost like you're painting with the eraser, just lightly brush it out and blend that light tone into obviously the darker tone. And you'll see here now, then I just kind of blur it together. I think this is kind of more a renaissance way of working back in the day from uh, get all them dark tones in and then just work the whites back into the into the dark tones. That's exactly what I'm doing here. You really need to take your time doing this now. Uh, it's a type of work where you could spend months just getting all these le little details in. But like I said, I'm trying to go for almost that airbrush statue look. So uh, it doesn't take too long just maybe a couple of days. It's also a very fun part of the drawing process because when you step back and take a really good look at the drawing, uh, it just pops off the, off the paper or canvas. And uh, yeah, this is the, the the kind of stage of the drawing that uh, I really enjoy. So I just keep working and working and working it. You'll notice there now that uh, the face is quite uh, muted, and this is because I've put that layer of graphite powder over the whole canvas. And you'll see now in a second, I'll just start erasing uh, the graphite off the face almost like what I'm doing here with the glove. There's that old saying, once you go black, you'll never go back. And when you're working with charcoal, it's pretty much the same. If you go solid black, it's almost impossible to erase. So just be very careful if you do do this in the future. What I'm using here is a little mono eraser. Uh, you can get them off Amazon and you can get all those little fine highlights in with a mono eraser. So that's pretty much the, the drawing finished there now. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed my audio over. Uh, I'm not going to lie, I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> Do, um, oh, here I am talking. What am I saying? So yeah, I'm, I've been an absolute nervous wreck doing this uh, voiceover, but uh, you live and learn, don't you? Once you finish the, the, the canvas, uh, apply some adhesive, and this will bound uh, the charcoal to the canvas and that way it won't smudge when you finish your drawing. In my case, I'm using the cheapest possible version and it's a two pound can of hairspray. 
So the most important part of the drawing is the artist's signature and the year of completion. So I'll just take the gum tape off. By the way, uh, I don't recommend using masking tape. Uh, masking tape is a bit of a disaster as uh, it does peel. So use some gum tape and that will keep the canvas very much flat uh, for the whole process of the drawing. And all the sleepers have a, a nice white border. This will allow you to trim the canvas if you have to, uh, just for framing it. So I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you haven't already, please give me a subscribe and a thumbs up. Uh, this will really help me in the early days of promoting these videos. And there should be a link there to go back and watch the previous videos. Alright, take care.